All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wonderful people, lovers of freedom all over the world. And wherever you are joining us from today, you're highly welcome to this wonderful YouTube platform that gives you quality news and information on everything happening in Biafran territory. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you've not yet subscribed. And make sure you turn on your notification because we will be giving you all the legit news and information as it is hot for Biafran territory. Now, we could go straight up to the issue on ground. Yes, um, because um, we have a lot of um, talks to address. And today, we'll be talking about the IPOB DOS. But first of all, first of all, before we go into the talk, I gave a news yesterday on the other channel, you know, on um, the backup channel, which is Exposed News TV, about, about, um, the current state of um, the Biafran declaration that is coming up um, December 2nd and the Prime Minister Simon Ekwan Joku, whom you'll be hearing his voice today on this live address that is given on his S handle, has actually announced that everything is being set for that um, declaration. It is a good thing and then um, Biafrans are happy concerning that. But before we go into the issue of the Prime Minister Simon Ekwan, Njoko, let me use this opportunity to tell you people one thing. I have actually come to the conclusion and I have found that the major reason why the IPOB DOS are scared of the Prime Minister and why they are trying to bring him down. Now, they are scared because of the power that, you know, he has actually acquired. <clears throat> and the major reason is that the more they try to bring down the Prime Minister Simon Elpan Joko, the more he grows in power, the more he becomes powerful. You know, the more they try to bring him down, the more they try to, you know, destroy what he is working for. You know, the more he's becoming powerful. And that is their major fear. I check I checked one of their uh, uh, one of their Ekureku. Uh, you know, because that's what they do. All they do is to gossip. One of the Kureku member was actually analyzing something, and I listened to it briefly. And he he was he went as far as bringing out the prime minister's um, tweet, and he brought out how people actually respond to his tweet, how people actually engage to his tweet. You know, and that was actually his fear. He said, this is the number of, in that particular tweet, you know, the Prime Minister was getting over 400 and, uh, over 400 and something, you know, um, engagement. And he was scared because of the kind of power that the guy, you know, the Prime Minister Simon Epa is actually, you know, acquiring. But the truth is that. Beer France have made up their mind if over 50 million people, including them, no matter how they try to hide it, have agreed that this man has a structure and are ready to work with this man, then who are you to bring him down? I keep on saying this thing, no matter how good you are, you know, people will always want to, you know, bring you down. <laughs> if they actually fought our Christ, Jesus Christ, then there is nobody, nobody that... You know, they cannot fight. You always get haters. And the funniest thing is that the Prime Minister knows this pattern of these people. And that is why he's doing everything possible to continue what he's doing. Now, on the issue of the IPOB DOS, the Nigerian army has come out to say that they caught the hitman of the IPOB DOS in um, Olo local government at emekuku also they said they destroyed another camp belonging to the ipob dos how true is this let us hear from the prime minister himself the prime minister of the biafran republic government in SI, the man that every hater is scared of the man that the nigerian government sees and uh, they run away the man that is shaking the world and the man that carried the mantle from the prime minister, from um, or the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, 
Mazi Namdekan. Let us hear from the Prime Minister Simon Ekba Njoko addressing critical issues. Enjoy. Hey, before I forget, please, you know what to do. I should stop saying this by now. Especially when you hear the um, broadcast of the Prime Minister, make sure you share to as many platforms so that people will also key in and know what is happening. Make sure you share this um, um, address to every platform on social media. There's going to be a lot, a lot of distractions coming from the Nigeria state because they have failed. They have done everything to kidnap me, they failed. They have done everything to attack me in Finland. They have sent assassin and everything, they failed. And all they need to do now is to be kicking like a dying horse. So we are not surprised. I just come this evening to continue to let the Afrans understand the need to remain focused and resilient in this quest for our freedom, which our forefathers have fought, other people have fought, and today we are here to put an end to this fight and restore the freedom of our people and our sovereignty state. My fellow Biafrans, without wasting a lot of time, I want to go straight to address many concerns by some you know, confused Biafrans and many Nigerians. One, I have observed in different media platforms where people are saying, if you want to fight Nigeria, go to Abuja. I have come to put to an end to those nonsense arguments this evening. We don't have any business with Abuja. We have business with Nigeria present in our land. And the only people we are fighting are the Nigeria representative in Biafra land. So we don't have any business. What are we going to do in Abuja? Is Abuja Biafra land? Abuja is not our land. We are fighting Abuja inside Biafra territory. I will never allow the criminals and terrorists that are killing our people in Biafra land to be killing them. And I will go to Abuja and start engaging people, other terrorists that are there, that are killing indigenous in Abuja. That is stupid. So those people that are telling you, oh, he, he, he's a, he, don't you know, you don't you know where Asorok is, where Abuja is going, but Abuja is not in the East. Abuja is not in Biafra land. Abuja is in Abuja. Government house of a state that is representing Nigeria is in Biafra land. Nigeria terrorist army that is representing Nigeria and killing our people, they are in Biafra land. Nigeria terrorist police that have killed thousands of Biafrans are in Biafra land. They are not in Abuja. They don't take you from Biafra land to go to Abuja and kill you, even though sometimes they imprison you in Abuja and other parts of Nigeria. But we are, first of all, dealing with those criminals and terrorists killing our people in our own land. So why should I go to Abuja? Why should somebody come to tell me, go to Abuja and fight them? I don't go to Abuja. I will not go to Abuja because those carrying guns to burn our villages are not burning it from Abuja. They are there in our land and we are fighting them. So I want to put an end to that nonsense that many people will tell you, oh, you are destroying Aligbo. Oh, you are destroying a Biafra land. Oh, Southeast is not a, a no-go area. Neither. Now you are destroying. Why should we be allowing them to come to our land to kill and you are asking me to go to Abuja and engage who in Abuja? Huh? Those ones that are being neutralized, are they neutralizing them from Abuja? So we will not go to Abuja. My fellow Biafrans, this fight will be between us and Nigeria terrorist representative in our land. It is not those in Abuja. Those who are in Abuja now, when they come tomorrow, we fight them in our land. And if they go back, they are lucky. So what are we doing this December? We are having what I call Biafra Convention. The Biafra Convention, where a legal document will be generated. And again, let me also quickly address this particular one because I have seen the Nigeria mobilize e bandit. They are sharing Mazin Amdekano's voice. Oh, Mazin Amdekano was saying that we are not going to, he's not going to declare Biafra. 
or he does not have the right to declare Biafra until people give him the right, which is right. People, the, the Biafra people did not give him the right to uh, go ahead to declare Biafra. He has not conducted a referendum. We did as a government. So that right, Mazen Namdekano was talking about people giving to him before he can declare Biafra has been given to Biafra government through referendum. What did you people know? That is the reason Biafra government has conducted a referendum that has gathered over 50 million votes of the Biafra people. That is the authority Mazen Namdekano was talking about. That was not given to him. And let me tell you, there is difference between Mazin Namdekano going to Ebony State and entire Biafrans gathered in the public. It doesn't make any difference. It is not documented. It does not form a legal document. It does not matter how many crowd you pull in the public. It does not matter how many crowd you pull in the protest. It does not validate anything. But what validates something is what you have in the document. And that is in the form of self-referendum that the Biafra government have conducted today. Those people you see that were gathering where Mazin Amdekano was doing his evangelism, there are still the same 50 million that have voted today. There are still the same people who have given this government the authority to fight for their freedom and declare Biafra with over 50 million votes. That is the authority that has never been given to anybody in the history of Biafra. Not even before the war did anybody conduct a referendum. This is the first time it is being conducted ever in the history of Biafra and Nigeria. Before the war, there were no referendum. After the war, there were no referendum. But today, the Biafra government has put everything, every mechanism in place and have conducted Biafra self-referendum. That is the authority, Mazin Amdekano was talking, that he's not going to declare any Biafra until Biafra people gave him the authority to do that. And let me tell you, nobody will wake up and give you authority. Everybody giving you authority. Authority is when you are calling sit at home and people sit at home. That is authority. But then it is not in a legal document form. Now what we try to do is to put everything in a well-organized way. More organized, more recognized in accordance with international law that will recognize you as an entity, as a state. That is what the Biafra government have done. And what are we using to get Biafra and freedom for our people? We are using four different approach. And I call it multi-dimensional approach. What are these approach? We have a political approach. Political approach. What is the political approach? The self-referendum that we have conducted. That is the political approach to the Biafra freedom. We have been able to organize the political approach. The political approach also is the creation of 40 United States of Biafra is part of the political approach. Putting in place state structure is part of the political approach. Defining our map is part of the political approach to Biafra freedom in 2024. And among other things, electing state admin, allowing the people to choose who will administer their state is part of the political process to be for freedom. The second one is called civil disobedience approach. What are the civil disobedience approach? Civil disobedience approach is this approach we have used to cripple Nigeria. If you listen to the beginning, the jingle from the beginning, you see the senators, the senior president of Nigeria lamenting that the city at home in the entire south is affecting them, affecting entire Nigeria. And let me tell you, it is the delegitimization. The civil disobedience is in conjunction with the delegitimization of Nigeria. So what does that intend to achieve? What intend to achieve is to show that Nigeria has no control over Biafra territory. It shows that Nigeria have lost every control over the people. It shows that the people are no longer trusting the Nigeria government. It shows that are no, people are no longer allegiance with the Nigeria government for the past three years. 
That is what this civil disobedience is meant to achieve. And many other things that I'm not going, I'm not going into details with, but I'm just giving you a brief of what this multidimensional approach is intending to achieve and restoring Biafra. Now, what is the third approach? The third approach is the diplomatic approach. What are the diplomatic approach that the Biafra government has done so far? The diplomatic approach is the engagement of government from the Congress in the United States to European countries, European Union, to formation of the Biafra liaison offices across the world, where we are directly communicating with the host countries. These are the diplomatic approach to Biafra struggle and Biafra independence. Now, I will also not go into detail to start explaining what we have achieved using this diplomatic approach. All of you can see some of the things we post on social media. They are not photoshopping. It is not Photoshop. When you see us educating the Congress of the United States, the people that when they move, others follow. That is the diplomatic approach. That is number three. Number four is the armed struggle approach. It is not actually armed struggle approach, but self-defense. Because while we are doing all these things, we don't want Biafras to be killed like chicken under the government that I'm leading. So there is a need to defend and protect them while we are pursuing the freedom. So in other words, we are also a peaceful movement. <laughs> peaceful, very, very peaceful. I'm peace ambassador. Is there any other person agitating for Biafra today that has certificate, internationally recognized certificate for peace ambassador? Nobody. Because everything I'm doing is towards restoring peace. So the international community and those who awarded this particular ambassadorship understand what I'm doing better than all of you. Now, the armed struggle is to protect our land, defend our women so that 200 people will not be killed in Biafra land like they are killing them in the northern Nigeria every day. So that 300 people will not be abducted from any school in Biafra land like they are abducting them in the northern Nigeria on daily basis. And I begin to wonder, how come they love us but they never allowed us to hold any position in Nigeria military? How come they love us Nobody has been kidnapped in our school, up to 300 students at the same time. But they are kidnapping them in 300, in 200, in the northern Nigeria. But they are crying about us more than the people that are being kidnapped and killed every day in the northern Nigeria. Every day, 150 people will be killed, entire villages will be wiped in northern Nigeria. They are not talking about it, they are talking about a, a region where no hundred person has been kidnapped under the leadership of this government except when ipob was praying in aba they went there and killed 150 people they were not killed by terrorists in the rag they were killed by the terrorists in the uniform police and army why in the north boko haram and iswap is killing are uh, killing people in 150 and 200 but in the southern nigeria in the eastern nigeria they are the nigeria army terrorist army and police are the one killing ipob members in 150s. Yet, they are the one crying for Southeast. I want you to understand, you know, who loves you. But you see, that time is over. Everything I'm saying here happened. In your own present, you see, you saw everything, Kuro Kuro. So, we are actually a very peaceful government and we carry arms against the terrorist Nigeria state. So now, our three mechanism and three approach is a very peaceful and internationally recognized. What are they? Civil disobedience approach, political approach, diplomatic approach and of course the armed struggle self-defense approach is also recognized in international law that is why i am shouting and studying the bam and i will do it 
and do it again and do it again until Biafra is restored and recognized by many countries as a solution to restore stability in the entire Sahel region. My fellow Biafrans, during this convention, we are going to unveil a lot of things for the Biafra people. Among those things, we will launch the Biafra National Identity Card and Biafra International Passport. We are also going to make sure that we unveil and launch Biafra currency, a gemma. And by the special grace of God, for those asking questions about Biafra money and all that, we are also going to launch Biafra Bank. I mean, licensed Biafra Bank. Black Marines, they are very active in delegitimizing the Cameroonian forces and the terrorist Nigerian state. This, as a result, this has led to the say the abduction or they say is the so kidnapping the is, so of an adult. Okay, the question is this, sir. Having seen what is happening at this particular region of the Biafran territory, what message do you have for the Cameroonian forces whom you have not directly given a warning of their invasion in the territories of we Biafra? Not, we are not, we what are not, message do you have for them? for them? We are not giving any, any warning. We are treating them differently, completely from the Nigeria state. We know our history, what they did to us during the Biafra war, because of, you know, they used them for the blockade. So we decided this time around to fight them differently. And that's what we are doing, protecting our people in Bakasi differently than what we are doing in the in the, the hinterland of Biafra. So for now, I have no message for them. OK. As the restoration of the independent state of Biafra draws very close, there was a time they delegitimized political leaders from the Biafra land. You gave them an advice to embrace Biafra and enjoy the proceeds that Biafra can offer to them. Or as well, go into anxiety, perpetuity. That green light or that green olive branch, does it still exist? And if these people accept to work with the Biafran government, are you ready to protect them? Because the Biafran people, because of their atrocious activities against the Biafran nation, Biafran people are just waiting for the second declaration of Biafra, where they can go head on. No. My main target, my main target now is not to fight or to avenge or to take vengeance. My main purpose now, my main focus now is to get Biafra independence. After that, we can settle our scores. We can begin to reintegrate those that have wronged us. We can sit on the table and discuss our differences and solve our problem. So my problem now is not uh, who is a politician who has done do this. You know, if you if you are one of those killing our people, if we get you along the you know in action, then of course the Biafra government and the Biafra forces will engage you. But for now, it's not for me to go and start looking for politicians or looking for who to capture, you know, you know, uh, on arm uh, politician or anything like that. That is not my, my concern. My main priority now is to protect our people against those carrying guns. That is not to say that uh, the enemies are not known. We know them. But uh, with, like I say, we treat them differently. Just like I just mentioned, I just made a comment about Cameroon and Makasi now. So we are fighting this uh, thing differently you know, in different ways. So my concern is not about them. Now. They are not my problem now. My problem now is, is to deal with those terrorists with guns and all that. And then of course, to make sure that uh, we push our diplomatic, uh, uh, you know, for a diplomatic uh, awareness, educating the people that can, push, you know, pursue the recognition of Biafra. That's my concern. Now. And for so far, so good, we, we, we won, not just won because it is just the right thing to do is to support Biafra. Nigeria has failed. The, the country has collapsed. 
They can't protect the people. They can't control anything. They have lost control of everything. If you don't know that, you know it now. And the Biafra land, they're going to lose control of everything. There, a time is coming where not even a bank will open in Biafra. I am telling you the fact. <laughs> and that is something that has to happen if this continues. Everything will be shut down. But we want to put every mechanism in place before we get to that point. Because that is the only way the international community will begin to talk about the recognition of Biafra as a solution to every nonsense and every mess and impunity Nigeria has done in that region. Thank you. Our PM, thank you so much for that response. Please, I want you to increase the volume. Your new nationality is making waves on the internet and they are running mad. Please, sir, increase the volume and give us more music style, more dancing steps, so that the, the enemies of Biafra can as will, well go and commit suicide. Will, Thank you so I much. Go, I, will, I will actually go and make video from my village in New Day. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Abu PM. Thank you, Mavi David Nana. Yes, Otu uh, Wamwanya, please uh, grab the mic and, and bring your own uh, question. Yes, uh, good evening, good evening, wonderful people. Your Excellency, all that told you, good evening from my end. I greet you. My question is um, I see this uh, very imperative to ask this question because of the attack that is going on everywhere today. And the question is should any group of persons stand up today and start agitating genuinely for the freedom of Biafra? Is there a need to attack them, try to stop them because we are heading to get Biafra? Or should we encourage them if they are genuinely pursuing the freedom of Biafra and they are attacking the Nigerian state? That's my question. Thank you, sir. Anybody that is attacking Nigeria state must be supported, whether the person believes in what I'm doing or not. But once the person deviates and starts talking against our own template and our own pattern of freedom, then that's where we have a problem with the person. So if anybody that is attacking Nigeria state, that person is not my enemy. So what it means is that the person is free and you can support the person. Thank you, sir. Because a lot of people know that we are what we are doing is genuine, but they go ahead attacking. Because a lot of people are trying to escape their punishment. That's why they send these guys to come and be attacking who, who didn't follow up the, the uh, modus operandi, how or they have not listened to you, but they go on the space and the media talking Reaction. No, please, please, please leave those on the space. I give them two weeks. They are gone. <laughs> they can't sustain our media war. <laughs> because our own is that we come with truth and fact. They are on, their own is to they come with propaganda and lies. Like the propaganda of me writing about Ngozo Koje Wala. Did, did you see how it turned out? They will not talk about it again. I just one week because it did not work out the way they were, you know, they because they are not thinking. So these are the kind of things they do. By the time they do it for two weeks, they are gone. We have been there for a lot, of, you know, many times. So, and one thing is that when I we see such thing, I don't, re, I don't react. You know, when uh, they Photoshop my my name and put on the message of Ngozo Konjewala, they were expecting me to start talking. I saw everything even days before Ngozo Konjewala responded. And I didn't want to respond because what they wanted to do is to for me to start engaging them. So if I engage them to say, oh, I debunk that, I didn't do it, they will go and Photoshop another one. And then, oh, I didn't do it. Then they will turn it. They will try to start manipulating and distracting the war I'm doing. I will continue to start debunking them. But I don't do that. So when I saw it, I just laughed. And uh, I laughed and then I pretended I, I didn't see it. So I was surprised that Nkozo and Kojia were actually responded to that. And that, which is actually a validation to the Afra government. He, she thought she was doing Simon Echo. So, and I believe that the people that did it actually regretted doing it. So, leave them. They come with propaganda and lies on social media. We come with fact and truth. Like I said now, 
I have addressed them. Those who say, go to Abuja, why are you turning Ali Igbo into a war zone? Go to Abuja and fight. And I ask them, I will never go to Abuja and fight because I'm not fighting to liberate Abuja. I am fighting to liberate Ali Igbo and Biafra land. So I'm fighting in Biafra land against those people who are in Biafra land. Right? They say go to Abuja and they fight uh, the Asorok. That's where the government, that government is not in Asorok. The government that we are fighting is not in Abuja. The government we are fighting is there, right there in our doorstep in Biafra land. We are fighting the terrorist army. They are in our doorstep in Biafra land. So why should I go to Abuja? These are the lies and, you know, very deranged reasoning for many decades. They have been saying, oh, you are destroying an evil. If you want to fight, go to Abuja. If you want to fight, go there. Go where they, they say they will go where they're holding Nam, Mazen Namdikan. We are not just fighting for Mazen Namdikan. We are fighting for Biafra and at the same time demanding the release of Mazen Namdikan. So it, the, their primary purpose of kidnapping him is so that they will turn the agitation to fight of Mazen Namdikan. We don't accept that. We know them very well. And that is what is pissing them off because we did not turn the agitation to the fight of Mazen Namdikan. Now everybody will say, oh, there is Mazen Like these criminals, you see now, they will just say, oh, you have no religion Mazen Namdikan, you want to declare Biafra. That is what they wanted to do. And we're not doing that. It is pissing them off. So whether they release Mazen Namdikan or not, we will declare Biafra. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Mwanya. I think you're good with that. All right, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome, uh, success. You're welcome. You want to greet uh, everyone, success? Yes, Mazi, Raf, good evening. You're welcome. Success? Okay, I think. Uh, can, okay. can you hear me? Can you yeah, hear me? Hear you. Yeah, can I hear you? Okay, okay, I greet once again. Good evening. Uh, good evening, my Honorable Minister of Information and Communication. Uh, you are doing a nice job, and uh, you and your team are very formidable. Prime Minister, good evening, and um, I just confirmed that uh, you are coming from uh, New Delhi. True, true, because I call, I phone who know, who knows, and the, the person that I phone, phone another person that knows, and they confirm that, yes, you are coming from that area. And our only ID card has eight pages. Imagine a passport will be lexical. <laughs> so I say kudos, kudos to the government and uh, the government that you led and the whole of the uh, whole Biafra. The declaration of the restoration of independence of Biafra, December second, is sacrosanct, and there is nothing will change this very date. Regardless, the enemies will succumb before that time. This they are waves of attack. They have seen it before. Uh, it is not today, and it's not something we are going to be continuing. We have to educate dear friends on the new nation that is coming with new policy, with new dimensions. The policy of the Afran Republic has never been seen anywhere, and we have a need to educate our people from top to bottom of how to handle the policies of this very nation that is coming. That it is not a nation of forgery, it is not a nation of um, a classmate is not a nation of um, um, ethnicity. It can never be a nation of um, um, a class. Um, can I say um, age grade? Because of one, you have to say yes. I know him. Uh, he's a man, no man. He's a, a god, god, god for that reason. Our nation can never experience such. It's going to be a nation based on principles and laws, which. The whole people, all our cabinet, 100 plus my cabinet members are working tirelessly to make sure these nations come. So our duty is to educate our people from river to the sea. And to the people in Bakasi Peninsula, I had a threat. I watched a, a very threatening videos from one of the Cameroonian uh, idiots who is saying that uh, Cameroon cannot lay full weight in the Bakasi Peninsula because they they own they are only five percent in the Bakas Peninsula. So what they will do what they need to do is to depopulate the Biafrans there and import Cameroonians from the north into that very place so that uh, they can have legitimacy over that land. And I'm we are warning them from this evening that should anything happen to anybody in that Bakasi region, they will know that 
there is a new dimension which nigeria is seeing that they have not started seeing so that's the message i have for that idiot that made that very broadcast i want to commend our people both home and abroad they are doing marvelously well and prime minister this our movement has never been this way never nobody has brought biafra to this very level nobody dead or alive has brought biafra to this very level we are in i also encourage you um, so, 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 do before not you continue before you continue to finish your statement let me just interject okay. before you continue i will tell okay. you one thing today we will shock the world with the calibers of people that will come to this convention in Finland. Continue. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> it's, a, it's another another hope has just been uh, installed in me. You must continue and never give a fuck. Sorry to use that word. Of anybody, any institution, any power, wherever it is coming from. The date has been, you told us from the 2021 that you know the day Biafra is going to come. You know the date. You keep saying it and saying it and saying it, and here it is coming and coming and coming. And uh, they and are again, seeing, you know, that they're not seeing. Let, let, me, let me interject again. You know, you always bring my memory back. And again, nobody is talking about that. I know the date again. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Because They're not looking at it. We already have a date, man. They're not looking at it. You should be saying you know the date. No, 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 no. When you started changing the narratives, when you started changing the narratives of how the previous people functions, you in your broadcast then, you say, changing the narrative of yesterday. From changing the narrative of yesterday, we now entered into full-time freedom live broadcast after you have con uh, i mean sanitized the conscience of the people they are now attuned to the real format of this very freedom everybody both our dead ancestors they are proud of you no case no pressure from any world leader whatsoever should make you back down ojuku did it and we are going to do it so you must finish this job it's a tax and we are behind you to finish it and those who are treating our people with death they should know that whatever you saw is whatever what 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 are going to uh, uh, reap as well thank you very much sir thank you thank you very oh, much and those people and those people their name were listed in our back you know i have uh, directed them to contact the government you know, whoever that is uh, they know that is closer to the government, we are working on it already uh, behind the scene. So the name that they were listed and they were published are not in the hand of Nigeria security agents or Nigeria terrorist uh, army. No. I want to make it very clear. Those names that the IPOB Nigeria criminals have published are not in the hand of any Nigeria security terrorist. They are free people walking freely doing their businesses where they have listed their name to be killed and they have succeeded in killing one that person they killed in Aba, his name is in that list and many of them have reached out to us we will protect them except those who don't want to be protected that is their business because they are close to them that's why they can get them so we will protect those the names that are posted today if you are one of them contact the government who will protect you and uh, make sure that those who want to kill you will go down at the appointed time thank you all right sir uh, sorry sir uh nigeria has just appointed uh, tunuba just appointed the uh, anati chief of army staff i told you which they never, said you, you which you said they lie he will never come back he will never come back i told you people black badger will never come back again thank you I fear who no fear you. <laughs> oh. Put more lap up. Okay. 
All the people that are listening anonymously in Doja, oh, they are fucking on Abahara. Media team. Uh, see, uh, sorry, I, I never knew I was muted. I was talking. Please, uh, thank you very much, success. Thank you very much, Adam Dembunandegede. Please uh, go straight to the point as I call upon you. We have a lot of hands that are up as we don't know how long our PM is going to spend here. But please, 60 seconds, please, the enough. Bring your questions. Very, very important. Uh, Chuku Maeze, please grab uh, the mic uh, and uh, do your turn, please. Yeah, um, thank you, um, Honorable Mr. Van Van Van. Um, and they will, um, to be our friends in the house, and they will to all the Honorable Ministers, and in they will to our noble Honorable PM, the man that is giving the zoo what to, what to I greet you. Um, I'm going to go straight to my, I don't think it's a question, but I would like the PM to just um, maybe give like a sense of directions to Biafra uh, moving forward concerning the statement I'm going to make. Um, during your, your submission, you mentioned one of the multidimensional approach that we are using to defeat the zoo in order for us to get our great nation Biafra. And one that struck my mind was the diplomatic approach. And um, just as uh, we are carrying out that diplomatic approach, we have the lives and office all around the world who are carrying the evangelists to the various host countries, um, their political um, representative in that country. Also, our lobbies too is doing a wonderful job here in the United States. And you know, after all this evangelism and all this gospel of Biafra has been taken to this political representative of the host country, on their own, they will want to carry out their own investigation to see how serious what these people are doing. And thereby, they might try to do more research about Biafra, the Biafra people, the liberation movement, and what we have going on and what we have on ground. And this brings me to want to say to our PM, what word of sense of direction will you give to the Biafran people moving forward so that when these people, while they are carrying out their, their, their own research on the Biafran people, they will know that, yeah, these people are well composed, well organized, most especially in terms of our media. And they might come to listen to our media space and see how we are serious, what we are saying about Biafra, what kind of people we are, and how we value our freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's why I want uh, I've been saying it that uh, the media, they should just focus on educating our people and exposing Nigeria stage in any given opportunity. And forget these people that are making noise on social media, trying to distract us. They will not last more than two weeks. Don't come to space and start talking, oh, they are doing this, they are saying this about PM, they are doing this about government. They are saying, no. Hit Nigeria government. The military barracks have been taken over. Let it be a topic by the bandit. The 90, uh, 100 people have been killed in Niger state. Let it be a topic. It is not happening in Biafra land. Biafra government has given protection to our people. 100 students have been kidnapped in Zafra. Let it be the topic. These things is hap they are happening every day. Forget all these people that are shouting and creating space on social media and then discussing someone else. Where is it from? Where is it? Where is Sam? Sorry about this. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, sir. All right, thank you. Oh my God.
Can you all hear me? Yes, yes, now we can, yeah. Yes, sir. 